Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Who is your favorite hero character? If you ask this question to the young people nowadays, you will hear this answer very, very often. Iron Man. Do you know why? Iron Man, I guess he has the full package. He is funny, he is witty, he is rich, he is cool, he doesn't care what people think, he saves the world, he has everything he always wanted. That's why he has the full package. Everybody looks up to that. That's fictional, right? Now what about real life heroes? Who do you refer to as a real life heroes when you think about this term? To me, I guess real life heroes are people that set a path for themselves to solve problems for people in order for the world to become a better place in all different ways. So big names like Steve Jobs, Bob Dylan, you name it. No, those, those people, they are heroes. And they are successful because they successfully solve people's problem. Am I right? So these are the real life heroes. But today, we're not gonna talk about this group of people. They are already there. We're gonna talk about another group of very interesting people that are there, halfway there, but almost there, but not there yet. We call them the self-proclaimed heroes. Now, what is, what is this group of people all about? I have been in this social innovation scene for some, quite some time, and I've seen so many people doing interesting things, great things for the community. But then, there will be people that do things for the wrong reasons. None of this is to say that they should stop it right away. But if there's an adjustment with what they do things, why they do it, and how they do it, it will be great. Let me explain it to you, okay? Three groups of people. The first group of people, we call them the egoists. These people, they do the great things, the charitable pursuits for their personal gain. They wanted fame, they wanted reputation, sometimes they wanted money. That's why they do it. The second group, we call them the solution maniac. Now this is very interesting. I find them really cute. They have this big passion about coming up with new revolutionary solutions. And they put this the mix and match and everything else that, that they feel so amazing that did you see this great solution? It's so revolutionary and groundbreaking. But you ask him, so what is this solution for? What problems does it solve? They are not sure. They are not sure. These group of people are really cute. They are generating solutions for a problem that they are not sure of. The third group of people, we call them the Me Too's, even more cuter. These people, they look outside the world and they find, hey, that is interesting. Bring it into Malaysia. <laughs> I can do it too. It's cool, it's new, so I do it. They are the Me Too's there. You can find people like that. There's three groups of people everywhere in Malaysia. I almost feel like it's a Malaysian thing <laughs> to be like that. But again, these people, they have been there for quite some time. They have been doing it. My talk is going to focus on a group of people that is not there yet. I would call us all the hero to be. If all of us here is going to change from where we are now to somewhere better, a better self, a better, you know, to live in a better world, in a better life, we need to go from here, we need to change, and go from here to real life heroes. We need to go from here to there. That is the right path. It seems very simple, but how do we do that? What is the key for real transformation? If we really want a personal change that would benefit us and society, what do we need to do about that? What is the thing? What is the key? A few months ago at my event, a young man came up to me and he asked me, Winston, how do you achieve balance uh, between your personal and professional life? How? Uh? <laughs> First of all, I like that he thinks that I have achieved balance in my life. <laughs> Because I'm far from that. I'm not there yet. Really, really far from that. And I, and I said this to him. I said, you know what? My life looks exactly like yours. And, and, and perhaps it is precisely like every single one of yours here. I wake up and show up every day for daily routines. And I, you know, face challenges. I 
give myself some pleasure rewards from time to time, and sometimes some learning opportunities or a healthy dose of fun. Just that. But just like everyone here, I go through my darkest period sometimes. I have stress. I am upset and I'm disappointed when things don't go my way. I remember 12 months ago, I was hit by a very, very big crisis with my project. I've been working on it for many months, but it didn't work, completely bombed. And it followed by a relationship crisis that ultimately lead me to an even worse condition. And all in all, made me into a state of complete devaluation of self and identity shaking self battle where I don't even know what I can do with myself anymore. It is really terrible. I was hit by an emotional breakdown. It may sound familiar to you, but when things like that happen, you have such huge amount of fear that you are losing out, that you are not fit for anything possible anymore. I was like that. I was broken into pieces. I wish that all these fears and anxieties will go away. And I wish that I could just close my ears and I say, la, 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 and I pretend I don't hear these fears, but it just won't. The only way that I can go through my days is to swallow the fears in and let it rot inside so that I can smile to the people in front of me. That's where I was. But then I realized that I got frustrated with this fear. I cannot let it rot in me anymore. So I stood up. And I said to myself, I said, Winston, listen, honey, your fears are not very interesting. They are not original, okay? And I can say this with complete authority because I had it. I had it before. And you know what? If, I, if I'm going to put it bluntly, your fears are exactly the same as all the fears that everybody has when things don't go their way. Okay, so your fears are as common as the mass produced, uh, made in China, sell in Tesco fears. Okay, don't treat them like they are so precious or special. Let it be. You know, when I think about that, the whole wiring changed. I found the strength to change. I found the strength to actually step one step forward to make myself better. I talk to myself like, don't play this sumo song to yourselves anymore. Jeez, get some new materials, dude. Get some new things for yourself. So the first step that I took, what was that? I go through a very complicated, serious, important process that lead me to where I am, where I am I'm today. I'm going to share with you that process. The process is called when you wish upon a star, make no difference who you are. Everything that you desire will come to you. <laughs> Thank you. I made a wish. I made a wish. I set a goal. I wanted to be different. And this is the goal that I had for myself. I want to feel alive. I need a breakthrough. I want to feel successful. I want to feel special. I want to feel significant. I want to feel like a newborn person. Uh-huh. Once I said it, I feel it already. I got it. But then I took one more step forward to make a difference. I'm a doer if you really know me. I think about things, I have to do it or else I will be restless. So I embarked on a journey of a 12 months um, plentiful and abundant supply of amazing experience. And here's some of it. I'm going to share it with you. I directed 12 short clips and commercials as a director. I hike on the Swiss Alps. Okay, don't ask me whether I climb up or I took the cable car. Let's just say it was really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I backpack in Amsterdam. Enjoy every single thing, including the little bench of fought the falling off stars. Totally mainstream. I started my own first musical storytelling show, and I was covered by all medias. And I was also interviewed by the radio, 
on the project that I started. And then, next, the next thing is, I brought in the first Mandarin TEDx to Northern Malaysia, featuring the most bankable director in Malaysia, director Chu from The Journey. And I wrote a lot of songs with my band, and my band just recently won the silver prize of a national Golden Frontier songwriting competition. I started I Am with all of my best friends. Wow, and five times already. And I had my very first solo concert. It was full house, filled with my friends. <laughs> well, I like it. I was uh, awarded as the professional member of the uh, Malaysian Association of Professional Speakers and also been chosen as the Northern Malaysian representative for the Global Speakers Federation. Next, my company, we work with the One Million Dollar Project in promoting LED to Malaysians. Next, I've spoken to more than 2,000 delegates from kids to MNC leaders. Next. I have coached and assisted more than 50 keynote speakers from TEDx and other conferences, and including the famous Dato Ambiga, the founder, the chairman of Birthday Movement, which has given me the best testimonial I ever had in my life. Next, thank you. This is very interesting. I co-hosted a Taiwanese TV show, two seasons already, which was aired in Taiwan, China, Southeast Asia, and Hong Kong. And this, this show just recently been nominated as the best travel TV show in the Golden Bell Awards. And this one, on behalf of the Global Shapers, I represented Malaysia to attend a forum in the World Economic Forum where 350 youth leaders across 150 countries represent themselves there to have a conversation about the social innovation scene in the world right now. And I personally spoken to Professor Schwab, the founder of World Economic Forum, about Malaysian's progress. How about that, friends? Awesome! Great! Isn't it great? Isn't it cool? Isn't it amazing? Yeah. No. It is not amazing. And you know why? I have a problem with how I started this journey. Feel. Everything started because I want to feel good about myself. I wanted to feel alive. I want to feel successful. I want to feel different. That's why I did all these things. None of this is to say that I'm not grateful for what has happened. None of this is to feel completely crazy about, you know, that I don't know the progress that I'm taking. No. I know where am I right now. Crystal clear. But am I proud? No. What is there to be proud of when every single thing you do is self-serving. What is there to be proud of when none of your initiatives, none of your things benefits people more than yourself? What's there to be proud of? I talk to myself like that every single day. Then I realize something. It's not just me that has this problem. A lot of people have this problem. We all want success, but we forgot about how to become successful. In other words, Having success means that you have the product of success. You are famous, you are rich, you are important, respectable, connected, and everything that you really wanted when you are successful. But you forgot that being successful has burdens, has jobs that you need to do, has work that you need to do and show up every single day. In other words, in other words, Everybody wants to be a hero, but nobody wants to save anybody. This is a place that we don't want to go. None of this is to say that you should not do things that you feel good about yourself. None of this is to say that I wish that everyone feels good about yourself, okay? 
But what is not good is that we are fostering a distorted culture of heroism among our society. We are promoting a culture where people imagine that they're doing enough for themselves and for the world. Now, this is not okay. I am against that. So how do we make things better? How do we really think? Look at this chart. Just now, I have shown you that in order to really change your life, really make possible transformation that would benefit you and the society, you need to just go up and become real life heroes, become successful either by starting a business or become a professional in really helping out, solving people's problem. But then, why we undertake, when we do things because we want to feel special, is we go through this, top, this path where we become self-proclaimed heroes. And that is not okay. And you know what? This is an issue that is shared among the world as well, especially the millennials, especially the Gen Ys, especially the new youngsters nowadays. They are entitled. They are privileged. They have been educated that they are special, that they can embrace their lives with limitless possibilities. And you know what leads that to? It leads them to a state of being a hipster. What is a hipster? Let me give you the example, okay? The definition of hipster is a person where he is an independent thinker, doesn't just buy opinions easily, and they counter mainstream culture. Whatever that's a trend, hmm, I want to be special, I will disapprove that. And then, they are always in the cause of changing the world. They are activists, they want to make a difference. They see themselves as significant and special individuals that would change the world. But you know what? Underneath this big title out there, what is really underneath? It's a person with an oversized hipster glasses with a MacBook. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else. And really, you know, if you really dig into what they really do in their lives, it's like this, okay? These people, they don't have real jobs, all right? They have callings. <laughs> What is my calling? What am I put on this earth to do? They ask these questions all the time. They have a life that is revolved around a cultural lifestyle and passion instead of a successful career. And they call it a beautiful name. They call it the freelance. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say no to, to fellow freelancers. I'm saying that people like that take on names to disguise themselves as something acceptable in the society. You know, it's really weird like that. And I, sometimes I think that these people, you know, if you're on social media, you will see people sharing world-changing information. Those, did you know how many percent of people are dying right now because of this cause? You should care, donate. <laughs> these people, they share world-changing information because they see themselves as world changers, the catalyst for world change. But you know what? Their activism isn't very active enough. It stops in social media, nothing else, nothing else. And you know what? Dealing with people like that is difficult. It's really difficult. If you want to debate with them, <laughs> save it. Debate, the, the, debate, uh, the, the definition of debate is that I have an opinion, you have an opinion, I tell you that I understand your opinion, and then I tell you how different your opinion is from mine, right? But if you argue with a hipster, he will tell you, <laughs> You haven't heard about the book, are you? You did not see the documentary. I will send you the link. <laughs> Guess what? They will not send you the link. <laughs> so this is the situation here. Thank you. So this, these are the group of people that is weird. I mean, come on. You know, hipsters, you need to do more for yourself. You cannot settle like that. Right? And there's another thing. They have an entire different, separate economic system. Okay? Their social ranking doesn't base on how much money they earn. It's based on the exclusivity level. If they know something that you don't know, they win and they feel like they exist. Okay? So hipsters like to go like, hey, did you hear of that? Never there. Eh? I send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> they like to ask, they always observe with the axis. And this is a hipster cycle where, you know, they dig up something very new and very special, 
often it's just something old and unrecognized. And they make it cool. And they spread it and preach it to the fellow uncools. And when the fellow uncools adopted it and use it and make it cool, they will claim that this is sold out. And they start searching for another thing that is cool. It's a constant cycle like that, again and again and again. And they never really achieved anything with their lives. And the last one, this is the part that I'm really, really fascinated about. Hipsters, I just said, they are countercultural, right? They look at mainstream people as lamestream people. It's so lame. They don't like it. But then, if you push them and ask them, did you know about the mainstream thing? They would definitely say, I know. I know it. It's just that I choose not to approve it. I know everything about it. I just choose not to embrace it. So sometimes, weird things would happen. I'm going to show you one video. This is <laughs> hilarious. Okay? It's an independent musical festival in America where a lot of hipsters were there. This is like, you know, a place to assemble all the hipsters in the world. <laughs> and then a TV show, they went to interview the people there, okay? They interview them, they make up names of bands. They make up crazy names of bands that doesn't even exist. They're so obscure that doesn't even exist. But that doesn't stop the hipster from saying that they know what is it about. <laughs> Let's look at it, okay? Let's look at it. Are you guys as excited as I am about the obesity epidemic? I, I, just, I just like their whole style, like their whole genre is just great. They're kind of like very like innovative and they're new. One of my favorite bands this year is called Get the F Out of My Pool. Yeah, actually, that I've heard from my friends. I don't know any of their music, but I've heard from my friends that it's not something to miss, so I'm not gonna miss it. One of my favorite things today, straight out of Williamsburg, the Chelsea Clintons. Oh, yeah, I have heard of them, actually. No, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to see them or not, but I do know of their music. What, what, did, you, what did you hear about them? I, they're just fun. What's fun about the Chelsea Clintons? I think they just give off good energy. Yeah. Like, you know, it, you can just tell that they're doing it from a good place, and it's like, it's, and you can just feel energy, I feel. And like, there's very few acts that, like, give you that feeling. Oh, my goodness. This girl can talk <laughs> with something that doesn't even happen before. I tell you, next time you can try this, okay? If you receive news that Benai is going to happen in an earthquake, <laughs> you go around, hey, how do you feel? Did you feel the earthquake? They will go like, yeah, I felt it. <laughs> I was shaking. The, the, the tables went here and there, and you know, like go there. And we realize how crazy these people are. Don't go this path, friends. Don't go this path. You are much more than that. You are better than this. Let me show you a chart. Now, see, this is a chart of the care, care axis and the can axis. Whether or not you care about a problem and you can solve it, okay? Look at that. Where you care and you can help. We call them the doers. These are the people that is already doing things to make the world better, okay? The people that is leading organizations, that are doing practical things, that is volunteering 24 seven. Those are the doers, admire them. And then the people that can't help and they doesn't care because they are the victim itself. They are the people in need. Now these people are the people that we need to help. And these people, the connectors, are the people who care but they can't help. We call them the connectors. They connect resources, they connect people that would help to the, to the people in need. And sometimes what they do is they advocate the need of that group of people. They tell the stories. What I want you to see is this group of X. People that can help, but just doesn't care. They don't care. Now this group of people, I'm sad to say this, they are the majority. They are the majority in our country. We need to move these people one step forward. And how are we going to do that? We need them to understand that one day they will be part of the victim population. They will be a victim of an injustice, imbalance, inconvenience, insufficiency, and all other in words here. <laughs> they will be. And if they don't become the part of the solution now, they will become a part of the problem and suffer. They will be. This is what we need to encourage them to think about. So, dear friends, where are you now in this axis? Where are you now? Do you care? Do you even care? 
or you are hiding under the, the surface that you think that you can't help because you don't have enough time or you don't have enough money. You have too much commitment. Think about where are you now? Because after all, we really hope that people that can help don't play small and don't play safe. We should do what the big guys are doing. Because sometimes we even have more resources than they have. And why aren't we doing anything yet? In order to change from where are you now to real life heroes requires only one simple thing. To know that you should care and you can. In order for that change to happen, we can only hope that we don't do it alone. You know what? Every time when I was here, with all the amazing beings here in IAM, I asked myself questions like this. I asked myself, what am I going to do with all the amazing people here, with this energy that we are creating together here? What am I going to do with that? And today, I think I found the answer. We can transform together. We can change together in the community level. But this time, we become real life heroes. Thank you very much.